Hello, my name is Timothy Ma, and I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco Server Access and Virtualization Group. This video is part of a series that is intended to show some of the unique advantage made possible by Cisco Server offering called the Unified Computing Systems, or UCS for short. This video will show the viewer the details of Cisco Virtual Machine Fabric Extender, or VFX for short, with Windows Server 2012, including both step-by-step -step configuration and a quality of service demonstration. There are several existing server virtualization issues we like to address. From a network perspective, an administrator would like to have a network and security policy that is attached to the virtual machine as it moves. Unfortunately, in today's environment, virtualization only allows network and security policy to be attached to the physical server, regardless of the time of the day. An administrator will need to know what virtual machines are doing and it is necessary to have a mobile policy attached to the virtual machine directly. The second issue with server virtualization is the virtual switch inside the hypervisor that switch packet between virtual machine. It is actually fairly difficult to see which virtual machine is actually talking to inside the server. Customers are demanding troubleshooting and debugging capability within the physical server. Lastly, nowadays, server admin manage the virtual switch, and they need to constantly communicate with their network administrator to configure the virtual switch. On one hand, server admin will want their network team to configure their virtual network. On the other hand, Network admin are demanding network tool to configure the virtual switch, and they want the visibility down to the virtual machine. VMFX overcome this three server virtualization issue and accelerate your data center virtualization. What are the advantage and benefit VMFX bring into your data center. First of all, a simpler deployment. Unify the data center infrastructure for both physical and virtual network with consistent networking feature, security policy, and management interface. Secondly, VMFX with SRIOV enable near bare metal IO performance for the virtual machine with decreasing packet jitters, latency, and increasing virtual machine throughput and host CPU utilizations. Lastly, VMFX enable the programmability of the data center infrastructure with robust troubleshooting mechanism and the capability to traffic engineer virtual machine traffic. This slide shows the high-level configuration flow to install VMFX with Windows Server 2012. There are a total of seven steps, and we will go through each individual section in detail. The first step in VMFX configuration is to upgrade the firmware version to UCSM 2.1 release. In this demo, We'll be using Cisco B200 M3 and VIC1240 as an example to showcase the process. Chassis 1 Server 8 will be our target Windows 2012 server. The associate service profile is VMFX Direct Pass 4. And we're mo now moving to Server Tab to see more details. In this service profile, East 0 and East 1 are the static configured VNIC, where East 1 is used as a physical function in SRIOV. An adapter policy called IOV policy is applied to this interface with multiple receive queue and receive size scaling enabled. Also, in another adapter policy called Hyper-V Dynamic is applied to the dynamic Phoenix, which is act as a virtual function in the SROV with multiple receive queue 
and receive size scale in configure as well. In next step, we'll install VMFX driver and forwarding extension on Windows. Under Device Manager, there are two Ethernet and two storage controller. We'll be using Cisco Fit Driver and Utility Setup Wizard to install both driver as well as VMFX forwarding extensions. Accept the end user license and select custom setup. We will install the iSCSI driver and we will select the remaining components including thick Ethernet drivers, thick storage drivers, VMFX forwarding extensions, as well as the thick utility tools. Complete. We could verify the driver details under the device manager. The first step is to create and configure Hyper-V vSwitch. Before that, we need to verify the Hyper-V role is enabled under Server Manager. Then we open the Hyper-V Manager window and select Virtual Switch Manager for the local host. Create a virtual switch with external type, and we rename the virtual switch name as Cisco-Network. Enable the single root I.O. virtualization under the connection type and apply the setting to the vSwitch. There will be a brief network interruption when create a vSwitch. Once the Hyper-V switch is created, expand the extension field and select the Cisco VMFX switch with forwarding extension type. Once we verify the vSwitch is configured successfully, we can move on to the next steps. For the next step, we'll create and configure Windows 2012 virtual machine. Under Hyper-V Manager, select New Virtual Machine Wizard. We'll rename the virtual machine name as Cisco Advantage VM2. And we will also increase the default memory to 2048 megabytes. Then we select the previous configured Cisco network virtual switch as the networking connections, and we'll leverage the existing Windows virtual hard disk to speed up the provision process. Once the virtual machine is created, go to setting and select network adapter. Under hardware accelerations, enable SRLV and apply the setting. Next, we'll connect and turn on the virtual machine, which will take a few seconds here. Once the virtual machine is up, logging with administrator privilege. Before we move to the next step, we need to verify the driver is successfully installed in the virtual machine. Go to search and select device managers. Under the network adapters, a Cisco Virtual Function Ethernet interface is shown, which uses the same driver as the Windows Server host and is pre-installed in the hard disk. For the next step, we will use Cisco VFX Utility Setup Wizard to connect Hyper-V host to UCS Manager. Accept the end user license and select Custom Setup. Install both Purple File Manager and the Purple File Utilities. Once the installation process is complete, restart the host to take effect, and this will take a couple minutes here. After Windows resume, a new icon called Cisco VFX Purple File Manager will show up on the desktop. Open the Manager Console and select Add UCS Manager. Enter the UCS Manager IP address. 
as well as administrator credential to connect the Hyper-V host to UCSM. Highlight the recently added UCS Manager. The Hyper-V cluster is pre-configured from the UCSM and select Add Host to add the local computer to the cluster. Highlight the local host, and the console will load the virtual machine and the virtual switch available on this particular Hyper-V host automatically. Next, we will need to add the previously created virtual machine into this Hyper-V cluster. And then, we could attach the Windows Server portal file configure from the UCS manager to this virtual machine. We can verify the virtual machine is successfully added into the VFX domain. By logging into the UCS manager, under VM tab, we can see the host blade 18 is show up, and the corresponding VM is appear underneath. The status of the VM will show up online, and the VNIC information will be available to the administrator. Up to this point, we have completed the Hyper-V with VMFX configuration. Along with the pre-configured setting, we now have two Hyper-V hosts with one virtual machine on each blade, shown in this slide. The last part of this video, we will utilize Windows NTTCP network testing tool to demonstrate the QoS capability of VMFX. As indicated in this slide, one virtual machine will be configured as NTTCP client to send the traffic, and the other will be configured as NTTCP server to receive the traffic. We will use the 10 gigabit QoS policy initially and switch to 1 gigabit policy to observe the change in response inside the To start this demo, we will connect to the NTTCP receiver virtual machine and execute the PowerShell command to initiate this NTTCP session. Then, we will switch to the NTTCP sender virtual machine to start the network traffic flow. In the receiver virtual machine, we will observe the network utilization as 10 gigabit under the task manager. After that, we will log in back to UCS manager to change the QoS policy for the virtual machine from Platin to Silver, which is configured with rate limitation of 1 gigabit. Change will take effect immediately, and we could observe inside the virtual machine that the network utilization has decreased from 10 gigabit to 1 gigabit. To recap, managed virtual machine can be challenged in many environments, and Cisco VMFX technology with Microsoft Hyper-V will significantly increase the efficiency for the server administrator to manage virtual machine. This ends the UCS Advantage video, where we show how unique capability in the UCS can lead to simplified deployment models with much faster service turnaround to meet the increasing demand of the business. Please go to www.cisco.com slash go slash UCS for printed collateral including a brochure that highlights the information shown in this video. Thank you.